All right, this is going to be a tutorial of how I tie my March Browns. Uh, when we're done, that's kind of what we're going to end up with. It's tied, for the most part, like a typical dry fly, but March Browns, if you ever look at the actual bug, have quite a, quite a bit of distinguishing features. They've got a lot of modeling, um, so there's some stuff in there that I try to mimic a little bit. So I've got a size 12 dry fly hook, and I'm going to use my favorite thread here, my 18-knot nano silk that I use for pretty much all of my dry flies. So I'm going to get this thread started and get my tag end secured. I do some extra wraps when I use the, the nano silk. It's a real slick thread. Not that I think the tag will come out, but some extra wraps will definitely help. What I also do is on my dry flies, I tend to make sure that I lay down a thread base. It doesn't have to go all the way back, but the reason why I do that is when you tie in the wings, when you go to cinch them down, they really have a tendency to want to roll on you. So a thread base will kind of help prevent that. So I'm going to go and I'd like a little bit more space. You want to kind of measure out how much space you think you're going to need at the head there and just leave your thread. Now for wings, I took a mallard feather that is dyed wood duck, but a little bit lighter. Um, I, I like to go lighter on the wings for these things. Again, if you look at the wings of a March Brown, they, they are pretty light. Um, also on the topic of wings, a lot of times what I do is I'll take that, that feather and I probably should have showed you the whole feather, but up on top here, when you open up a, ba a bag of mallard, you're going to see all kinds of different feathers, feathers that are shaped differently and all that. And what you want to look at is you want to look at the top and you want to try to find a feather whose, whose fibers at the top are kind of straight across. Um, a lot of them, a lot of those feathers, you'll see they're kind of peaked. You want to avoid that. Um, so I've got two feathers here that were kind of the same thing. I laid them right on top of each other and I notched out the middle. I really only use two feathers for dry fly wings on larger dries, like size 12 and sometimes 14, but most of the time just 12. I, I'm not a big fan of dry fly wings. Um, you know, I see a lot of dries tied with Wally wings and stuff and they, they look nice, but you know, why you want to add more non-buoyant material to a dry fly is something that I think is really just done for picture reasons. So the wings on my dry flies, which are something the fish are not going to see, are usually done with one feather, minimal material. I think it kind of helps with the flight a little bit when you're casting the fly, but that's about it. I don't really want that soaking up material. So what I'm doing is I am just carefully aligning the tips on these feathers. That's kind of what I have now. So now I'm just going to kind of lay that down. That's about the length of the hook shank. So I'm going to lay that right on top. I'm going to bring a wrap over. I'm going to tighten it. And this is the step here where if you don't lay down that thread base, when you go to tighten it, those wings can really roll over the shank on you, and it's kind of annoying. So that's what we end up with. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors, open them up, and then that, that point right there where they meet, I'm going to try to lay that right at the start of those feathers. I'm going to lay the feathers straight back, and I'm just going to cut at a taper. I kind of botched that a little bit, but that'll be fine. So I'm going to kind of hold that with my finger and wrap my way down secure in that. And you can kind of see that taper developing. All right, for the tail, I use the, the same type of material for most of my dry fly tails. Um, I've got a bunch of different colors. It's one of my, definitely probably my favorite one. I like this Nature Spirit dry fly tailing spade feathers. They kind of look like this. They are they're, they're very stiff, excellent tailing material. So that, that's what I use for tailing on pretty much all my dry flies. So I'm just trying to line up some fibers here, pull them off the quill. Yeah, I kind of pulled off a bunch that kind of threw them all out of whack. I'm going to start over. So all I'm doing is I'm taking this feather, 
and I'm pushing those fibers 90 degrees off the quill, pulling them straight so they're nice and even, and then as I hold them tight, I'm going to rip them right off. And that'll give me what I need. So I'm going to take that tail, I'm going to measure it out. That's about good right there. Get that secured. And as I work my way down towards the back, tight wraps. And I'm going to hold that tail right on top of the shank so that it falls exactly the way that I want. And we're good to go. I've got a little bit of finger oil in there. Those will those will splay out a little bit more if I if I get those dried off here. So this is going to be a single strand of A dot Vivas. Now it doesn't have to be Vivas. I, that's just what I have laying around because I love Vivas. I between Vivas and Nano Silk, I, I I tie with those two quite a bit. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to secure a piece of brown six dot Vivas. On the front side of my hook and if you don't have vivas just a, a nice brown round thread uh six out actually not really six out eight out if you have uh euro thread or not not euro thread uni thread some eight out uni thread would be would work nice too so i'm just going to work my way up to where i tied in the wings and i'm going to reach my scissors in there and get rid of that tailing material. Now, you can kind of see what I did as I worked my way up. I made sure that I left that tailing material in there because that's going to lay on top and helps help build my taper. Now, this is going to be a dub to dry fly, so if there are any mistakes to the taper, not a huge deal, you can fix those. But if you have a nice underbody, that always helps everything. So I'm going to put a couple of wraps in front of the wings. Now I know that most of the time this calls for a thread dam and you can see that I really only did a few wraps to kind of get those to stand up. I didn't do too many. You don't want to build up too much thread right here because you want your hackle fibers to stand 90 or perpendicular to the hook shank. So when you wrap it, once you get in front of the wings, if you've got a big uneven dam there, uh, that's going to splay your fibers all over the place. It'll make your dry fly look ridiculous. So you don't really need a lot. Now, obviously, you know, you're going to think, well, if I don't put a lot, then my wings aren't going to stand up straight. And you can kind of see right now that my wings are not standing up straight, but that's fine. There's another stage of this process where you can position the wings exactly where you need them. So try to avoid a big thread dam. That can cause more problems. So now all I'm doing is taking light wraps around to try to collect these fibers a little bit so that I don't have big bushy wings. I mean, this fly is lucky I'm giving it wings at all. Just not a big wing fan on dries. They look nice, but they're not that functional. Wally wings are cool, origami wings are cool. Take your picture and enjoy it, but at the end of the day, there's really no need. Okay, so you can st see that those wings are still relatively uneven. So I'm just going to move that one up a little bit. This one is kind of a little bit too far forward, but not a big deal. I'm going to wrap my thread in front and I'm going to come around and I'm going to use my thread to just pull it back where I want it. And then once it's where I want it, take some wraps and that'll lock that right in. So pretty easy way to get those to stand up straight without building up a bunch of bulk in front. All right, the next step is pretty basic. We're just gonna get some dubbing on here. Now I wanna make sure that I control the tapered look of this fly, so as always, I want a nice thin noodle here where I can continue to make wraps and fill in some imperfections wherever I see them. I have mentioned in previous videos on dub bodies, I have seen people build a taper right onto their dubbing noodle. And that's, I mean, that's cool. I mean, one step, it's easy, but you really got to nail that technique. You got to have the exact amount of dubbing. You have to build your taper at the exact spots. It's kind of tough to do that. I like to make it just a nice long noodle. And that way 
You can fill in some errors and make sure that your body comes out exactly how you want it every time. Okay, so I'm going to move my thread back to where my tail is tied in. I'm going to get a little bit of dubbing there to get me started. And I'm just going to start building my body up the shank. I'm going to start out with some touching wraps that will start to taper because of the underbody we built. But as we get further up, I might have to build a little bit of that taper myself. Now, one of the things I'm going to do here too is I'm going to build up a little bit of a bigger body than I normally would. And the reason why is I'm going to rib this with this thread. So that's going to mash it down a little bit. And I also think I should point out the dubbing that I'm using here is nothing crazy, nothing fancy. It's just March brown color dry fly dubbing by hairline. That's, that's all it is. So it's not a custom blend or anything that I found in some sort of weird fly shop. It's just straight March brown colored hairline dubbing. I like it because it, it's, it's more of like a dark creamish kind of thing which actually is not a great color for a March Brown, but when you supplement it with the thread rib, it, it kind of kind of fills everything in nicely. Plus, we're going to do one other thing with this fly that you're going to see on the back. So I'm going to continue on with this. Let's build that in. Continue with that look. comes my dog. What do you want, babe? You're bored? She's staring at me wanting to go run around. <laughs> Gonna add a little bit more on here. I just want to advance the body up a little bit. that. I'll build that up so where it's all pretty uniform. That looks good. Okay, now here's where I want to add a little bit of character to the fly. And again, this is something you'll see on the natural. So I'm just going to take a pheasant tail here and I'm going to pull off about six to eight fibers nothing crazy about six to eight fibers I'm gonna pull those so they're nice and even pull them off the quill and I'm gonna flip them around so that the the side with some character is gonna be on top and they're also gonna flare up a little bit so I'm gonna pull those nice and tight I'm gonna to try to keep all those feathers together I don't really want them splaying and I'm gonna lay them down right in between my wings and I want them to overhang the back of the fly a little bit, not too much. And I want these fibers to sit right on top of the fly. So I'm just going to get those where I want them. I'm going to secure them. And I'm good there. Now, what I'm going to do, I could easily cut that off, but I'm going to advance my thread to the front of the fly and continue to tie in these pheasant fibers. Now it's not that I think that they need to be, you know, secured more so than anything else. What that's for is you can see as we, as we tie in more material on the back, we're building up a lot of bulk up in here. So that's a lot more bulky than the front. So by continuing to tie those pheasant fibers in, <clears throat> you can build up a little bit of bulk in front, make sure that you have a little bit of a uh, uniform length on your hackle. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this thread tight, and I'm just going to give it some twists with my finger. I don't want this thread flattening out. I want it as thin and solid as possible. I don't want it, you know, flattening out and widening out and covering up too much of the body of this fly. I want a nice, thin, brown rib that just gives the body a little bit of character and a little bit of modeling like the natural. Nothing too crazy. So I'm going to pinch that in my hackle pliers. And I'm going to take the points of this pheasant. And I'm just going to pull it down. I'm going to try to keep them as flat as I possibly can. 
I don't want to make them too thin. I'm going to pull them towards me and I'm just going to secure them with my thread as I come over the top. And now that I have that secured, I'm just going to snip a little bit of this scrap off there because it's kind of in my way. And we're just going to go up. I'm going to hold that pheasant as I go over the top because I don't want it moving off of the top of the shank. And I'm just going to continue on with some even wraps to give this fly a rib and some nice character. And again, as I said in the beginning, I'm not a big fan of water absorbing materials on a dry fly. So it might seem weird that I'm putting a little bit of pheasant on the top. And in a place where the fish don't see, but I can assure you that on a size 12 with the amount of hackle and the dubbed body, that is not going to affect the buoyancy of this fly at all. So now that we're at the front, I'm going to get this nice and secured. I'm going to leave my players right on there so I get a little bit of weight coming down on that thread and I can tie it in nicely. And let's get that out of there. Okay. Clean up the head a little bit, continue to build up a little bit of bulk, and we are ready for the last step, which is our hackle. So what I do on my March Browns is I tie in... A, I have a really, really nice honey dun cape. It's it's brown, but it's a it's a lighter brown. Really, really beautiful cape. That's kind of what it looks like. It's it's perfect for March Browns. Um, so if you can find a way to get your hands on a nice honey dun, it makes fantastic March Browns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the honey dun, and I'm going to use a little bit of just straight actual brown. So I'm going to take the brown hackle. And I'm going to tie that in first. And I'm going to make sure that that is secured all the way up to my body. And then I'm going to take the honey dun. And that's going to get tied in second. And again, I want to build up a little bulk in front. So I'm going to tie these quills in all the way to the front. And we'll get those snipped out. Careful not to snip your thread. Okay, and we're good. All right, so what we're going to do from here is I'm going to take my Honey Done first, my primary color. Get that set up right at the back. I'm going to get a nice clean wrap on there to get this hackle started. And we're going to wrap this. Now, one of the things that I, I want to get that a little closer. One of the things that I want to explain as I wrap this is if you want nice, clean hackle wraps and you don't want your fly to look like a total, complete mess, I will say that where that mess usually comes from is when you are wrapping the hackle towards you, that specific step. So what will happen is... Here, I'll, I'll show you an example now. I'm just trying to get my players on here. So I'm going to wrap this over the top away from me. And then I'm going to come underneath it. Get out of the way of my wing. And right now, as I'm about to come back towards me, that's usually when you start grabbing a bunch of fibers. So if you can watch the feather, I'm going to bump it out towards the front of the fly and then back towards the back again. All that's going to do is make sure that when I come towards me, I'm not grabbing a bunch of fibers and making them splay all over the place. That'll give you much cleaner hackle wraps. And I like my dries to be nice and fully hackled. I don't, I don't do, um, I don't cut half of the hackle fibers off to make them look cleaner. Again, that's all just for pictures. I want this fly to float and hackle's going to float it. So I'm going to put hackle on it. I want to make sure that it's going to do what it's supposed to do. I'm not, I don't I don't tie these flies for Instagram or any I mean I guess I technically do, but the flies that I tie, I actually fish and use. And yes, I try to make them look nice, but that's really more for me than anything. I I just feel like a well-tied fly with the proportions I want. I fish it a lot more confidently. 
and a well-hackled fly is something that I will much more confidently fish. Okay, so now I'm going to take my scissors, let's get up in there and get rid of some of those fibers, clean that head up a little bit. Kind of mash some of them down. I gotta get my wings back where I want them. Get out of there. I got a couple of, a couple of scragglers. There we go. All right. So let's take the brown. Let's wrap the brown through. The brown will give it a little bit of color and a little bit more character. And doing two different color hackles, it's the same thing as if you were tying an Adams or anything like that. It's just two different colors. You can kind of see how the honey done and the brown, neither one of them really overpower the other. It's, it's a really, really nice mix of a light brown with a little bit of a dark brown. And I, and I think that that does a really, really nice job of representing the natural, which has some modeling and some variation in its color. March browns, if you ever actually look at them, they're not they're not really all brown. They have nice light wings. They've got modeling in their color. They're actually a really cool looking mayfly. So I'm gonna get that all the way up to the eye. Get my thread where I need it to be. Let's get that secured in. And I want to point out again that, you know, the techniques used in this are, are really just dry fly techniques in general. So, yes, we're tying a March Brown, but you can take any Mayfly you want to tie and tie them the same way we tied this one. So get some wraps in front. Get that right in there. Get some of those fibers out of there. I know you're going to have some fibers sticking around, but... Really not a huge deal. When you get in there with your scissors, then we're going to cover them up with our thread. So you get a nice clean head on there. So let's cover all that up. My final step, this nano silk thread does a really nice job of taking color. So I'm just going to take a brown sharpie here. Color that up. Start building up my brown head. Get that right where I want it, one in front. And then we're gonna slip in here with a whip finish. And we are good to go. Let's slip that in there. Get rid of some of these stray fibers. Something's kind of sticking around a little bit. And I'll run back here. I don't really love. Yes, I get a little too picky with this kind of stuff, but oh well. So there you have it. That came out. That came out pretty nice. Really happy with that. That is a March Brown dry fly. This is a size 12. It's tied for the most part, like you would tie pretty much any dry fly. But I do add a little bit on the back and a little bit with the ribbing. And I kind of do that just because the, the March Brown Naturals really do have a lot of character to them. They're really cool flies. It's a cool cool uh, hatch to fish, cool fly to tie. Um, so as always, any questions or anything, leave them down in the comments. Um, I've been pretty taken aback the last few weeks at the response that my channel has gotten. I've always loved YouTube, but I've never really focused on it. I'm kind of starting to focus on it a little bit more. Um, the subscriptions have, have flown through the roof. I really appreciate that. Uh, if there's any flies you want to see a tutorial on, I'm starting to make a tutorial on pretty much everything that I tie. Um, so stuff will continue to come out. If you have any suggestions, just post them up. Uh, any questions or anything, just post them in the comments. I try to respond to every comment I see. Um, so I'll try to get back to anybody that's got any questions or anything. So there you have it. Size 12 dry fly, March Brown. That hatch is coming up pretty soon. One of the earlier ones here in New York, so got to be ready for it. Okay? Appreciate it.